prepare for this time of communion. Let us join together in a wonderful hymn of the church. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. We'll sing it just one time.
drink you all night in remembrance of me. Loving God, because of your sweet Holy Spirit, because of that sweet heavenly dove staying right here beside us, we know that your spirit is in this bread, in this cup, and now goes with us wherever we go in our lives. First in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. And amen. <clears throat> Very familiar words from the second chapter of the book of Acts. Jumping around a little bit, I urge you, sometime this afternoon or this week, read the chapter in full. In fact, the whole book of Acts is intriguing. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one tongue set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, 
from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and they were confused because every heard them speak in his own language. And then there was Peter. Peter, standing up in the streets with the eleven, raised his voice and said to that multitude, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. Let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucify, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Pentecost. The day of the sacred fire, two months, less than two months after the resurrection, the crucifixion of Jesus, and the apostles and the other followers of Jesus were still spending most of their time hidden away in a borrowed room there in Jerusalem. They were still too frightened to tell their story to the world. They were waiting, waiting for something to happen. And they believed that somehow, some way God would give them a message of what to do and then he would give them the strength to do it. They sincerely believed that Jesus was about to return and usher in the kingdom of God. Now we know that it was the Jewish festival of Pentecost and Jerusalem was crowded with tourists and with religious pilgrims. And as we read that little bit in the book of Acts, it's obvious that Luke can't quite find the right words to describe this event. Listen to a portion of it again. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound, like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each one of them. Folks, that was nothing less Nothing less than the power of the living God, the Holy Spirit coming there into the midst of the followers of Jesus Christ. And it's important to notice that Luke is having difficulty describing the Holy Spirit and what it looks like and how it feels and this, that, and the other. But he speaks clearly, very clearly, about the result of the coming of that Holy Spirit. So these terrified, petrified followers of Jesus were transformed from trembling jello-like people into courageous witnesses of the Christ. From men and women that had been too frightened to appear publicly on the streets, these people were now changed by the coming of the Holy Spirit into fearless preachers, willing to sacrifice their lives. There was Peter. The one who denied Christ three times and he stood boldly on the curb there in Jerusalem and he preached a sermon that was so convincing that over 3,000 folks came to believe in the cause of Christ. Those were the events that happened on the day of Pentecost, the birthday of the church. And that day is when God entrusted the tending of the sacred fire of the gospel to us, to the people. And that fire burned brightly in Jerusalem that day, but it was never God's intention for that sacred fire to stay in Jerusalem. By the power given by the Holy Spirit, the followers of Christ, their mission, our mission, was to spread the fire to the whole world. So first it was taken from Jerusalem over into the Palestinian hills of Judea and Samaria. And then shortly it spread through Asia Minor into Smyrna and Ephesus and Galatia. The Apostle Paul had a dream and God gave the word to take the fire to Europe. 
And so Paul took the fire of the faith and he began to share it in Corinth and in Athens and in Thessalonica and finally in the capital of the whole empire there in